All right, I think we're good. Thank you guys for your patience. And thank you for being here. I'm happy to see all your smiling faces, whether you're on screen or live in person. Um, we started, let me stop the music so it's not distracting me. Um, we started a chakra series a couple weeks ago. And these are the main energy, sand, it, energy centers in the body. A chakra actually means wheel or disc. And they're depicted with different colors and symbols. They have different uh, tones that go with it, certain musical notes, certain musical instruments. Uh, certain mantras. Uh, there's lots of different things that we can do to work with these different centers. And the first chakra we were talking about is about physical identity and tribal identity, our sense of belonging, sense of safety, sense of security, our primal instinct, survival skills. It concerns the legs, the feet, the process of elimination. And it's all based on um, the earth elements and even our ancestral roots. We moved up last week to the second chakra. The second chakra is about creativity, um, fertility, sensitivity, polarity. Um, it's about our emotional identity, our sexual identity. And then we're moving on up to the third chakra this week. So I specifically didn't say on social media what chakra we were working because I don't know. I hear core work, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to do like the typical core work that we've done in the past. Hopefully, you'll enjoy this a little bit better. Um, but the third chakra, let's just talk about that first and then we'll dive into the body and work with it. It governs from the navel to the sternum. So, anywhere within this midsection of the body, both front and back. So, it's the mid back as well. And if you think about what is held here, it's the digestive organs. So this really concerns the digestive tract, the digestive system. And I always like to say this because it took me years to realize this myself. And then when it, you know, when you have that light bulb moment and it clicks, it's like you start having more revelations. So when we look at this particular chakra and it having the digestive system. It's not just about the foods that we're intaking and consuming to use for fuel. That's part of it, yes. But this is also about how well or what are we consuming, what and how well we're digesting and assimilating life, experiences, conversations, what we're going through right now, right? We've all been hit in the gut with what's happening right now. We've all lost our foundation from the first chakra with what's happening. We've all been impacted by our relationships. I mean, families and friendships have split or are in the process of splitting apart. That second, we're being hit hard in these lower three chakras right now or have been. Um, so when we have uh, this look on the third chakra, the color is yellow. It's considered the indwelling place of the sun. But I want you to think about the color yellow. If you look at color therapy, it's happiness, it's joyful, right? So joy and happiness is like a positive thing that comes from the third chakra. The opposite of that, the counterforce, um, an author that I've been reading calls it the demon of the third chakra, it's anger stress. So think about when we're really stressed, we breathe more shallow. We're not really getting that deep breath here, which also inadvertently affects the digestive system. And we can literally get stopped up, right? So anytime we're uh, deficient or excessive energetically in this region, it can lead to IBS symptoms, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, any real digestive disorders, as well as any type of disease that happens with these organs. So that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to promote more balance here. Now with each chakra, there is something that it governs physically in the body and there's also life lessons we can learn, there's spiritual components to it, as well as psychological components to it. 
So kind of a psychological phenomenon, I would say, is this is considered the seeds of the ego, the seed of our personality. So our likes and our dislikes and, you know, just the way we operate. So the ego has its good moments, right? It gives us the willpower to strive to obtain what we want to achieve or gain. Uh, but it can also be a detriment because the ego has pride or the ego wants to overpower another person. And this is considered our center of power, our center of strength and resilience. And we want to be empowered, not disempowered. Okay, so I know I'm dealing with third chakra stuff right now because I mean, I cried to Allison this morning. I'm feeling a little disempowered lately. And I feel like it's all this stuff. So I'm glad we're doing it this week. I need this work this week. Um, that's all I'm going to say for now. I want to show you one thing that we're going to do. And most of you have done this with me before, but in case you forgot, we are going to be on our backs after we center and breathe. And we're going to do a little cat cow movement. Now this little cat cow movement, we're just moving the pelvis forward and back, okay? And then we're eventually gonna go around the clock. So we'll go forward to six, off to nine, up to 12, across to three. So you're gonna have to really tap in to the muscles in the abdominal wall. The transverse abdominus muscles kind of fan across the abs. The side obliques are more here. And then the rectus abdominis muscles are right in the center. So if you're doing sit-ups or crunches, you're really primarily focusing on just that one section. Transverse abdominis muscles, it's when we create that Uddiyana Bandha or we have really good posture, right? It really opens and spreads out. Anytime we're doing a twist or some lateral kind of crunches, it's going to get the side obliques. Wednesday, I'll go ahead and tell you I'm going to focus a little bit more on twists. Today, it's going to be a little bit more core work and a little bit more of the Bondo work here at the Naval Center. So it's called Manipura. It's the Sanskrit term, and it actually translates to mean city of jewels. So I want you to think about your inner organs being jewels. Okay, so let's lie down on our backs and let's... First of all, stretch out the legs and press out through the heels of the feet to the degree where your knees tighten up, your quads engage, your heels levitate away from the floor. And just fire up some energization and muscular work through the legs with the action. And then release. Let your heels descend. Let your toes soften. Let your shoulders and upper back spread out and place your hands on the midriff above the belly button. You can fan the hands open. So it's okay for your thumb and index finger to kind of be at the base of your ribs. And close your eyes. So we're starting off supine because I want us to focus on diaphragmatic breathing. Diaphragmatic breaths are something we do a little bit more naturally when we are in this position because the body's trained to relax and go to sleep in this position. So allow the belly to be soft and start to control your breath so that you're feeling the belly swell up into your hands as you breathe in and to gently fall away as you breathe out. Please know that when we are stressed, we tend to breathe shallow. And when we breathe shallow, we have less movement here. So let the movement happen. Because movement here in the belly with the breath helps there to be movement in the digestive tract. It keeps things moving along. So if you're ever feeling constipated, this is some breath work you can do to help. So relax for a moment and breathe. 
But I want you to visualize as you're breathing in and out that in the pit of the belly is a fire that you're stoking, creating. And by the end of the practice, I want us to visualize a bonfire. But right now, just think about it being just a small flickering flame. As you know, oxygen can fuel the flames of the inner fire. And I want us to ignite that inner fire, not just for digestion, what's called Agni in yoga, but the inner fire of transformation so that this practice can promote inner alchemy. On your next inhalation, let's go ahead and bend the knees. Let your hands fall away to the mat beside you. And this is where we're going to start just simply rolling the pelvis forward and back. So think of the navel being 12 and the pubic bone being 6. So let's go ahead and roll the hips and pelvis forward as if you're trying to land towards your six bones. The low back will sway up and away from the floor. And then as you exhale, dig your feet into the sticky mat. Feel how your tailbone lengthens towards the feet and your belly flattens and your low back touches down. And then inhale, rolling back to six. And then drawing it up to 12 towards the navel. Feel free to have the eyes closed as you work with this action. Rolling forward on the inhale, drawing it in and up on the exhale. So since I've always heard chakras rotate clockwise when balanced, we're gonna go counterclockwise first. And so let's roll towards six. And then let's draw in through the left side of the abdominal walls to three. And then pull it up again to 12. And then now contract the right side of the abdominal walls to nine. And then to six to three to the left, 12 at the top, and nine to the right. One more, working around the clock to six, to three, to 12, and to nine. All right, let's roll it back to six. This time we'll go clockwise. Take it to the right to nine up to 12, to the left to three, down to six. Good, keep connecting to this different muscular activity with each step that you take. One more around the clock. And then once you finish that sequence, hug your knees in. Roll to one side of your body. Press down to the top hand and slowly. Do a little pranayama. With pranayama, you may want something to sit on because that can help to neutralize the back where it's not pulling on the low back and then creating some poor posture. So this breath is gonna be short and sharp through the nose, emphasizing the exhalations. I have not done this in a mask, so I apologize if it gets too hot. If it does get too hot, you can leave it out, okay? Just be aware that this breath exists. Kalabhakta breath is the breath of fire. So bring your hands to reside here at the third chakra. And it looks like this. We're pumping the navel straight in. 
And I close my eyes. Okay, so you can close your eyes. Three, two, one, relax. Circle the arms up on the inhalation. Place your palms together overhead, bend the elbows, slay them wide. And then we're going to breathe in. So the hands are over the crown of the head, breathing in. Practicing that Uddiyana Bandha, that same zipping up action that we experienced on our back to 12. Hold and retain at the top, and then exhale, breathe out. Parvantasana, seated mountain pose, breathing in. Pulling the energy from the lower three chakras up to the heart, retain and breathe out. One more, breathing in. Know that this diaphragm muscle at the core is also working with the diaphragm muscle at the pelvic floor and release. Inhale, lift the arms straight up. Exhale, fan the arms back down to the belly. We're doing this two more rounds. Breath of fire. Please know that you don't have to focus or think about your inhalation. It will naturally come even though it feels subtle. I hope this never happens to you, but if it's ever really wintry and cold and you break down and you have to wait for a lift or you're out on your own and you don't have heat or extra clothing, this breath can help to heat you up. Three, two, one. Not a breath you would take with a hot flash. Okay, <laughs> inhale, arms up overhead. Palms together, elbows slay. Take a deep breath in. Pull the navel in and up towards the heart. Track that energy there, this place of integration, the seat of the soul. So you're less apt to be led by the ego and then exhale it out. Two more times, breathing in. Pull briefly at the top. Exhale, release. Last one. Let it go. We'll do one more round. Inhale, lift the arms overhead. Exhale, bring the hands to the core. Okay, breath the fire one more time. They do this breath a lot in Kundalini. I was just talking about before class, sometimes you can get that kind of natural high feeling. This breath will do it. So you have to be cautious with it. Three, two, one. All right, last carbon toss and a seated mountain pose. Arms overhead, palms together, breathing in and up. Lock in the belly and then release it out. Breathing in. Retain. And release. That's one. Let it go. Hands down. And if you are sitting on a bolster, you may want to come down. So I'm trying to think. Uh, I know you, you've got a hip thing that you're trying to. You might be able to straighten. Let me see. Oh, straighten that left hand. So what we're going to do, just keep that straight. Right. That way you're not, I think this would get in the way. All right, hands to the knees. But we've been sitting cross legged, so let's swap the position of the feet. This way, we're kind of targeting the other hip, balancing it out. We're going to do a Kriya, but not the Kriya where we come down like this. We're going to do the Kriya where we're kind of like, a, call it a barrel roll. I don't really know what it's called, but you're moving more through your rib cage. It's like a little bit of a cow when you come forward and more of a cat stretch when you pull back. So think about the clock that we were just doing on our backs. It's very similar in a way. But I want you to primarily focus on that third chakra. Sometimes we can focus at the heart center, and the heart center is included. But I want you to think about your belly and mid back. 
And you can go at any pace of your liking. I like to breathe in and pull it through the front and then exhale, take it through to the back. That way there's some harmony and synchronization occurring between the mechanics and what brings the spirit into the practice, which is the breath. Okay, then we're gonna reverse that. So you're gonna to start to rib slide to the other direction. Notice what you experience along the way. You guys are doing this good. And I'm speaking about the males in the room. I had Robin class yesterday, poor guy, he couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Good and release. All right, we're going to come up to squat. I don't know if squat's okay for you. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. We're going to come to squat. And this is where you, you may or may not need blocks, okay? Because we're going to eventually straighten the leg. So if your hands don't come down to the floor, and I would use squats. So your feet are apart, either edge of the mat, your tailbone is kind of facing the floor, the crown of your head's rising up, and you can bring your hands to prayer. So stick to your feet a little wider, Betsy, like to either edge of your mat. Is that going to work, or is that too much? Are you better the other way? Yeah. Do it your way. Yeah, I can hold it. Yeah, do it your way. Okay, so we're going to go back and forth between this pose and the straight legs. So we're not going to continue to hold that. We're going to turn the heels right behind the toes and we're going to bow over to a wide stance through Tadasana. And then we're going to turn the heels in. So we're going to come back down towards flat. Okay, we're just going to flow with breath. Inhale, we're going to straighten the legs, pivot the feet, and bow over. And the exhale, we're going to come back into a squat. So this squat, by the way, Right? We think about first chakra because we're so close to the ground and it's good for the legs and the feet and it helps with the process of elimination. It's good for the second chakra because we're opening the hips. It's a release for the low back and it's the natural position for childbirth. But this position is also great for the third chakra because a squat can help us to, like I said, with the first chakra in many ways. So any type of constipation you ever experience, this is a good pose. So pause now that I've told you that. I may have told this in the past, but when I was a flight attendant and we started to fly to India, they took us through a training program so that we could learn a little bit more about the culture. And I remember going through the program and they said, don't be surprised if you find footprints on the toilet. And they didn't explain it. <laughs> and I was like, what? That was a hot statement, right? And then I understood because once I started to fly to India, you would go into the bathroom and you would see footprints on the toilet. I understood it when I went out as a tourist into the country and realized every public bathroom was a hole in the ground and two planks to stand on and you would squat. This is actually a better way to use the bathroom which is why they invented squatty bodies. You can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. Put something under your feet, lift your knees, because you use the proper muscles to release. Okay, there's your scientific lesson for today. Wow. Turn your heels back, fold down again to a wide stance with Shavasana. Now flip your hands upside down, let your whole upper body hang free. And then start to heel toe the feet towards each other. So they're side by side, but not quite touching. Toes point straight ahead. This is a little bit more intense of a forward fold. Shift your weight forward towards your toes so you're not just hanging out with the heels of the feet. Root through the feet so that you're igniting the action through your legs. And then notice what you're doing, if anything, in your core. Most of it just spill out. I have a tendency to spill out, but we want to hug the belly in to bring support to the low back. Now bend your knees. 
Okay, think about when you have a fresh tub of ice cream and you're getting that first scoop, right? And you see that circular indention wherever you took the scoop. That's what we're trying to create around the navel. Okay, so scoop that ice cream around your navel, draw it in, pierce that navel towards the spine, press down through the soles of the feet, and slowly begin to roll up one vertebra at a time. So the safest way to do this is to push through the feet and to keep scooping in through the belly. If we leave either one of those out, it could strain the back. So it's very important. Hands to the heart. Inhale, let your arms circle wide and frame the face. Drill the feet down, fly the fingertips skyward. All right, exhale, bend the knees. Now, lean forward just a tad and drive your thigh bones back. Now, instead of focusing on Uddiyana Bandha, I want you to focus on your side waist. Lift out of your side waist. Lift out of your side ribs and side lats. That will create a natural lift in your belly where you're not having to think about those muscles. But activating the other muscles around it, then they'll start to recruit the muscles in your core. Good, exhale. Keep your knees bent, bring the arms down, hang over into standing form of child, and let your belly just take rest on your thighs. When the belly can rest and have this compression, it's also good for massaging the internal organs if you're breathing properly. But to come up, we can't just let the belly be soft. We have to drill the feet down. We have to scoot the belly in. Let your arms hang like a rag doll. Strong leg, strong core. Strong leg, strong core. You need the blend to provide safety for the back. And then eventually unroll. Stand up. Head balancing over the heart. Heart over the pelvis. Good. Inhale. Arms reach up. Feet root down. Exhale, bend the knees. Good, send your thigh bones and hips slightly back, lean slightly forward, pause. Good, now notice how there's more weight in your heels. If you extend up to your side body, up and out through your hands a little bit extra, it's gonna distribute more weight in the front side of the feet. Do you feel that? And it also engages the abdominals. That's what we want, it's more integrated. Exhale, fold, keep knees bent. Standing for a child pose. Bow your head. The belly can spill out here. Let it land on your thighs. Diaphragmatic breathing. One more roll up. So now, pierce the navel in, press through the soles of the feet. Roll it up one last round. I'm already building heat. Are you guys feeling the heat? That's the inner fire. Okay, hands to the heart. We're going to move on from here. <laughs> Inhale, let your arms lift back up alongside the face. Bring the palms together today and start to humbly bow. Pin for your hips. When you fold, you're going to inhale, step back, plank. When you step back to plank, drop down to your knees to tabletop. Bring the knees more forward. So if you are in plank and the knees come down, they may not be under your hips, you see. So crawl the knees slightly forward. And I want you to keep the toes curled under, okay? When you really push into your toes and really press down through your arms and hands, I want your belly to hug in towards your back body. So you have that strong core to support your back. All right, now keep that strong core and you're gonna lift and hover your knees off your mat. Belly hugs in so you're not swaying the back. Arm strong, core strong. Toes reading a nice stretch too. Keep breathing, keep your head up. Neck in line with the rest of the spine. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Good, give your 
uh, adds length here. So we think about lengthening the limbs. We talk about lengthening the spine, but we should have length and openness in the belly too. One more breath. Exhale, come back down towards your knees, but they're gonna hover and you're gonna hug the belly in and in, in. We're only doing three of these. Belly hugging in. Keep breathing. Fuel the inner flames. Good. Exhale, downward facing dog. I don't know about you, but I like this so much better than sit-ups. Okay, come back down. Hover your knees. Hover, hover, hold. Now descend your knees. Untuck your toes. Wrap your arms around you and drop into child. So you're coming down to the brow, and if your head doesn't softly land to the floor, you're welcome to bring a block, bolster, blanket underneath. So we were doing standing childs earlier. We're doing the more restful child's position here. It's good for the second chakra because we're hinging from the hips. It can be calming, can be cooling. It's good for the third eye because we're penetrating that point on the forehead. We're getting a slight inversion. But I want you to recognize this is really good for the third chakra too. Forgive me if I've told you this story before. Years ago when Gabriel was a soccer player, I went to a practice. It was at Pinkman Park. All the parents were walking. I was the only one watching. And this little boy comes running off the field, lands next to me, and he's holding his belly and he's moaning in pain. And I told him to take this position. He was still in pain. So I said, flip on your back and hug your knees in. As soon as he did that, he farted like three times. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and smiled and ran right back to the field. <laughs> So please know this is medicinal. It's good for abdominal pain and pressure. It's good for menstrual cramps. It's good if we have too much gas. All right, inhale, stretch the arms forward and out. Rock up to hands and knees. And come to upward facing dog. And you're stretching through the abdomen. You're on the still through the arms. You're lifting the crown up in a lofty. And then as you exhale, you're going to slowly buckle the arms. You're going to come down to your belly on the front. Right. And you're going to come down to the brow. All right, from here, I'm going to work you a little bit here. Take your hands up underneath your shoulders. Inhale, fly your legs and feet off the floor, spread the toes. Now slowly lift your head, your chest. So this locus, we think back then, we think heart chakra, right? But this is also good for the core. And we're going to seesaw up and down. Ooh, I know. Exhale down to the brow. Keep your legs and feet flying up. And then as you inhale, land your legs and feet and slowly lift your face and chest. Good. Exhale for seesawing the other way. Down to the brow, legs and feet lift. And then inhale, we slowly pick up the front half of the body or the top half of the body and lower the bottom half of the body. All right, this time we're gonna come down and we're gonna stretch the arms out in front of us. Palms are gonna be face down. We're lifting right arm, left leg. And release. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> left arm, right leg. And relax. <laughs> Good, swim. I know. <laughs> this is so good for us though. All right, hands slide up underneath the shoulders. Let's, let's move on. Lift <laughs> up the table. Pull back into child and come back to rest and give your back muscles a break. Let that assimilate within. Let the energy disperse. And I want you to picture that flame in your belly growing stronger and stronger, higher and higher. I want you to consider putting all of your impurities, all of your toxins from your mind and body into the fire. 
I want you to throw all of your anger into the fire. Throw anything that no longer serves you into the fire. Inhale, we'll stretch the arms forward and out. Wrap up hands and knees. Curl the toes. Cover the knees. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Come down, cover your knees. Keep the belly drawing in. Keep breathing, of course. And then exhale, downward facing dog. One more of those, shifting forward, cover your knees, keep your arms strong, your core strong. And so down with these All right, now let's slowly travel the feet forward, step by step, all the way to the top of the mat. Coming down to Uttanasana. From Uttanasana, bend your knees deeply to any child's. Just going to do one more set of what we did before, not multiples. Scoop the belly in, ground your feet, strong legs, strong core, roll it up one vertebra at a time. Slowly but surely, there is no rush. When you arrive at the top, lift the arms straight up. We're going to complete the Sarya Namaskar with this final set, bend the knees. Slide your hip side back, slightly lean forward, and then really lean, put up and out. Feel that action in your belly. And then exhale, release, standing child's. We're going to come up one last time, and we're going to move on. Scoop the belly in, press through the feet, hang the arms and head. Gently roll it up. Awesome. Okay, so in order not to confuse you guys, because I need to stay in the frame, why don't you guys turn this direction and you guys can turn this direction and I'll face this direction. Grab your blocks in case you need them, and we're going to step wide on the mat. Square your feet. And if you're pronating or supinating the feet, correct it. The weight's evenly distributed. All right, lift your chest up. Keep the blocks in your hand. Fold over and take the blocks below your shoulders. So shoulders, elbows, wrists aligned. And then notice how when we have the hands and the feet down, the belly wants to flop. Is that just me? No. No, okay, good. Because <laughs> I know I'm having some third chakra stuff. So draw the belly in, hug it in towards your back body. Now, if you have a tendency for vertigo, I want you to stay here because your head is more level with your heart. If you're more flexible and you don't have vertigo, you can change the position of your blocks or lose them all together to set the hands to the floor. Now, when you set your hands to the floor, make sure the prominent weight is in your feet, not so much your hands, because we're going to take a twist. We're going to station down through the left hand, but we're going to fly the right arm out and up. Now, something that I've noticed personally, even though I can flatten my left palm, I feel like I get a little better twist if I'm on the fingertips. Now, that may not be true for you but I wanted to mention it so that you could experiment for yourself. If it's not true for you, you can create your own expression. So twists are fantastic for all the chakras, but primarily the third. We're gonna focus on a lot of twists on Wednesday. Exhale, bring the right hand down. All right, we're gonna take that to the left side. Sweet, and you can set your whole right palm to the floor or block first. So it's open to the left. And then you can try the fingertips and see what happens. Again, most of your weight is in your feet, less weight in that bottom hand. Notice where you're more limited in your twist. Is it upper back, mid back, low back? 
because low back is first, second chakra issues, mid back, third and fourth chakra issues, upper back is fourth and fifth. Exhale, lower the left hand. Bring your blocks along with you if you need them. We're gonna walk, see where your hands are in relationship to your right foot. You're gonna go halfway over, halfway over. Yep, now lengthen through your spine. So push your tailbone back, reach the crown of the head forward so you're providing length. And then twist again to your right. Yeah, that's it. I learned this from Rob Stryker years ago, except we came up and down out of it, doing the chance of own. We're just gonna sustain it. All right, exhale, bring that hand down. Walk your hands back to center. Speaking of Rob Stryker, you guys remember Julia Behar that moved off to Colorado? She bought his house. Okay, hands halfway over to the left foot. I wanna go to Colorado just to see where he lives. <laughs> but I also equally love her. Press through your sits bones, reach out to the crown of the head, and then slowly radiate the left arm up. And Patty, you're going to be reminded of her because she's going to sit down on the Yeah. Three. Excellent. All right, now we're going to try our hand at coming closer towards the right foot. Stay established in both feet, even though you're walking to the right. Notice how we can put more uh, or lack of attention on the one that we're not facing. So be equally attentive to your left leg. Okay, now take a twist. You got it. So we want the length so that we're getting circulation into those spongy discs. Your knees. Walk it on over to the left foot. And like Katie in the last class, she was already to the outside of her left calf. I can't go that far. But create your own expression. Don't forget about your right leg, even though you're not looking that direction. And then exhale, release. Good. Now bring the blocks back underneath your hands at center. Heel toe the feet a little closer together, but the heels are going to turn in toes out, bend the knees. We're coming into the victory squat or Kali goddess pose. Are you okay here? I don't think I would twist if I were you. Just stay here. The rest of us though are gonna twist, but what I don't want to see or what you wanna limit is the wobbling through legs. Remember foundation, foundation's not gonna change. We're going to align in the upper body. So you're twisting to one side and then the other. Good. Stabilize your hips, stabilize your knees. That all stems from the feet. That's it. Good, Art. Nice in. We're getting a little. Second chakra work to the pivots. All right, when you're ready, slowly straighten your legs. Turn your toes to face the same direction. Turn the foot that takes you to the top of your mat and then step up. Awesome. From here, we're gonna set the right foot back behind us. We're gonna lunge that left knee, snacking that knee with precision over the ankle. Look at your back foot, because if the foot's turned towards the side of your mat, it could torque the knee. So you want your heel back and toes turned in at an angle. I'm looking at you, Allison. Pop your right foot over slightly to the front door, so your toes turn in more. Yeah, yes, we're like that. And then square the hips. Okay, once we square the hips, Right, warrior poses, we think for chakra, because standing poses work the first chakra, but that's because I'm letting my belly spill out again. So lift your arms up, fly up through your side body, that should already help. Lift through your floating wrist, up through your sternum, through your crown and fingertips, or zip up, engaging 
the midriff, you should feel the same as if you were um, doing 12 o'clock on your back, like we did earlier. That also will engage the right side of your glutes. All right, bring your hands to your heart. Rotate the back foot now so it's more parallel to the back of your mat, what I asked you not to do earlier. In this pose, that's what we want. Keep lunging the knee, keep standing open to the hips. Fly the arms out over the legs, warrior two. So think about this, Udiana Banda coming into play to build confidence and courage and strength, the qualities of a warrior. Now straighten that leg, relax the arms. All right, turn the feet to be parallel. We'll take it the other direction. Now, it's okay to turn to the back of the right, right. That's going to turn to the back. You're going to offset your left foot, warrior one first. So you want your back foot turned in at an angle, the front knee lunging. Your hips squaring as best as you can. They're not going to be perfect. And then lift the arms up. So right now, it's all for chakra. Add in third. Add in the length, the engagement in your core. Bring up the courage, the strength. The resilience, the confidence of your inner warrior. Exhale, hands to heart. Okay, take that left foot and make it more parallel to the back of your mat. Strike warrior two. I like to spread the feet a little wider in warrior two than they are in warrior one. If you can experiment with that yourself. Just notice if you're kind of flopping in your belly. Lift it up. Good. Relax your arms. Straighten the front leg. Turn that right foot in. And then turn the foot that's going to take you to the top of the mat and step up. All right, we're coming back down to the floor. <laughs> Lift your arms up. Lift your heels up. This is a, another way to do chair pose. And then we're coming down towards to balance. And this way, we can place the hands down and just sneakily come to the floor. If you walk to the floor, you're close to the floor. It should be okay. <laughs> Three out of All right. I hate to keep talking about ice cream. <laughs> 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 I know you are. <laughs> She's an ice cream lover. But I mean, it's the best visual that I can think of. We're thinking about scooping out the ice cream at the center of your belly. Arms are going to stretch out. And you're going to roll it over. One vertebra at a time. Let your hands release in your head. All right, inhale, stretch the arms overhead. You don't have to point your toes. Just keep your legs the same. Now, when you breathe in, bring your head up with your arms. Use your abdominals to come up, 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 up. And then lengthen the arms up overhead for Dandasana. Bring the arms down in front of your chest. Scoop into the belly. And you're rolling back one vertebra at a time. When your head releases, the arms can stretch overhead. We're going to do one more. Arms reach up. This is rectus abdominis muscles. These are the sit up muscles. Oh, and you'll be happy to know this is the last rollback. <laughs> arms down, belly scoops. And this time, when you lower your head down, curl your knees into your belly and chest. Open your arms wide. And let the knees roll to your left.
Breathe up through the right side body, through those side obliques, through the side inner costals. Cooling down now. But keep envisioning that inner fire in the belly. If you're feeling that internal heat, let it be ablaze like a bonfire. Sometimes we do rituals on our retreats or teacher training. I've even done it at the studio before, where we meditate and we think about something that's you know, kind of bothersome or something we're holding on to that we know we need to let go of or something that we need to forgive or a person we need to forgive. We write it down on a slip of paper. The intention of letting it go, and then we light it on fire. Burns away into the ashes so that the phoenix can rise a version of your better self. Inhale, draw the knees through center. Exhale, let them roll off to the right. Breathe up and down your left side body. So some of the crystals or stones you could use to work with the chakra, it's basically anything that has the yellow color. Citrine, amber, yellow calcite, yellow topaz, yellow jasper. Some of the essential oils, lemongrass, ylang ylang, cedar wood, <coughs> chamomile. All right, when you're ready, draw back through center. And then we're ready for Shavasana. <coughs> so feel free to uh, hug the knees in if you need a power pose after the twist. Feel free to provide whatever padding or restored position if you prefer to use props. And you can just be solo, just you and your mat in the horse position, if that's your preference. And uh, Allison, why don't you take another one for Shavasana? So you want to lift up a little bit? Oh, it's there? Yeah. It's more of the, uh, the hair for this. Okay. I'm going to come over, stay in that position. I'm going to change out the song that we're listening to to a mantra called Ram Ramaya. Ram is the seed sound or mantra for this chakra. Think about when things hit us in the gut, it's like a ram, right? Except we call it Ram. That's just a little memory jogger to remember it. I want you for the next few minutes to either picture your midsection a glow like the sun, very radiant, bright, or you can picture that internal flame. As we listen to Ram, Ramaya.
this mantra is meant to help to invoke joy. Take a deep breath in, down into your belly. And a slow breath back out. Place your hand back to your back. Another deep breath in. A slow breath out. Exiting the pose that you have chosen to return to a comfortable seat. So you may have noticed I didn't really recite any affirmations today because I have so much other information to give. So we're going to sit upright and we're going to state our affirmations here while we're more attentive. So you can just recite this internally to yourself. If you want to say it out loud, you're welcome to, or in a whisper, you're welcome to. Affirming now, I am enough. I am confident. And piecing those together, I am confident and enough. I am confident and enough. Recite eternally. I am strong. I am resilient. Piecing it together. I am strong and resilient. I am strong and resilient. Let's place our hands together in prayer. You are strong. You are resilient. You are confident. You are enough. You feel that you're lacking these qualities. Know that you have it deep within. You just have to recognize it, lean into it, and be it. What we're going through now needs our strength and resilience. And light within me honors and bows to the light within each of you. Thanks, you guys, for joining.